Hello everyone, welcome to the Lotus Evora GT. I have the key, which is gonna become quite vital in a minute, not just to start the car, but because this generation of Lotus, this one and also the Elise before it, had an immobilizer embedded in the key, which is, how do I put this nicely? It's frustrating, is how it is. That's probably the nicest way I can think of to put it. So I have to hit this immobilizer to, uh, to make it recognize that I'm here and I'd really like to start the car, please. There we go. That worked the first time. It doesn't always, and if you don't know that that secret little center button is the immobilizer button, you'll sit here for a while without the car running, which is uh, worse than driving it. So, the AC is working, that's novel. The stereo looks like that, it just says Alpine at the top, it looks like something you would have put in aftermarket. That has always been the problem with the Evora, but if you know me at all, you know I am a bit of a Lotus fan. So we're going to drive this as a POV because we haven't before. 2021, $100,000 car. This is as refined as the Evora got. The Evora was always kind of underappreciated and then was refined further here. One of my favorite things about the dash layout, besides the fact you have real gauges, is right here in the tunnel, hopefully you can see it, is my miles per hour. The digital gauge is down there, which is pretty interesting. You're welcome for the noise. It's interesting to revisit this car after driving the Amira, which is something that we've done. We have a review of the Elise, the Amira, and the Evora together. But the Amira was definitely built on the learning, the pieces, the history of the Elise and the Evora GT. was going all the way up to red line 7,000 fuel cutoff comes in pretty hard it's the same thing on the Amira and this has been something that has come up in discussion online as if these cars can't be fun they don't rev high enough and I don't understand that you hear the noise right it's got plenty of shove great amount of noise is very stiffly sprung. The suspension here is quite aggressive. This definitely is Lotus taking what works about the Evora and making it into as track capable a car as they can, which makes me wonder about the development cycle of the Amira. Will they go that same route or not? I, I kind of wonder if they will because it's a, it's a hardcore way to think about your car tuning for sure, but it is something that Lotus does very, very well. road has only been open a couple of weeks you can tell that because of all the dirt and because of the snow still draining off of all of it it would be nice to this owner and not go through the messiest stuff I can find you might not be able to see it but you can see the uh, throttle actuator on top of the supercharger in the back same engine that found its way into the Amira this is a former Camry V6 reworked by Lotus retuned by Lotus 
416 horsepower, about four, about 317 pound-feet of torque. But you come to Lotus for the handling. This car is very rigid. There's very little body roll. The bumps are aggressive in this car. A suspension this stiff is definitely most at home on a track. Obviously, you could daily it. It, it feels similarly hardcore to the Elise, but I would actually argue possibly more so than the Elise. This is an extremely focused car at this point. I've always liked the Evora, even the base Evora, the Evora S when they first started making them, are wonderful cars to take on a back road and to enjoy as a Grand Tourer. This is becoming more and more of a track beast in this GT form. We had it once against the BMW M2 CS, and I mean, they were good competitors, both pretty track focused, performance at all cost focused, and this still felt like the more focused driver's car. How focused do you want to be in your daily? This is definitely an aggressive suspension. There's no question here. I've got the wrong shoes on. That's what I'm realizing. My shoes are too big for the footwell. Footwell is smaller than it is on the Amira. And a little more to the right, your dead pedal, which didn't even exist when they first introduced the Evora, the Evora is actually this little sliver, about half as wide as you would expect a dead pedal to be, but it works just enough. The early ones didn't have one at all. This feels like a gift from the gods compared to that, but it is pretty little. The interior in here all works. It's all very simple. It's all very clear. It just, it doesn't feel bespoke to the car. It feels very much like they found what worked and they bolted it on and covered it in Alcantara. Still a very nice place to be. I think it's hard to argue that this is a $100,000 interior, but this is a focused car. It feels like somebody took a really good chassis and just decided what is everything this needs to be an amazing track car, and they wound up with this, which of course is something that a ridiculous person like me might use as a daily driver, but uh, it's gonna be, it's too much for most people. The supercharger that's on here is the same one that's on the Amira, and this is, it's just, it's so easy. It's so easy to work with. The power is so readily available all the time. I mean, of course, at the upper RPM, there's good power. But what I find interesting is how great it is at low RPM. sorting out my big feet in the footwell so I can do this. I'll be interested to see how the prices change on these as the mirrors get out there. Do people want this more hardcore experience? Do they want the more usable daily experience of the Amira. 
one of the things I will say is these seats are so much better than what's offered in the mirror right now, but they are non-adjustable, which isn't really for everybody. And if you're a person like me that shares a car, how do you adjust that with your spouse? It'll be hard. So that's why these seats are better than what you'd find in a mirror or most cars, but it's an aggressive choice that isn't for everybody. I continue to say that the um, Evora is very underappreciated. I think it's been overlooked its entire lifespan. The GT is the most refined driver focused version. It might be too focused for some of you. You might be better off with just an S when the car was still good and, and actually those are very affordable. This is still right now the better part of a $100,000 car. Are you able to do that? Is it worth it to you? I think uh, the interior says no but the driving experience might be yes.